So six weeks of the NFL season is in the books. So keeping up with the pace of every couple of weeks, I do an updated 2018 NFL mock draft. Here you are. It's in the description box down below. One round. I think the next go round after week eight, I'll do a two round edition to try and give you more exposure to what I'm starting to think about certain players, so on and so forth. Again, though, I don't know why I bother coming on here and really spending that much time actually talking about it, because a lot of you, I can tell based off of the comments and response of the video, literally click on the video, pause my mouth, which is probably to your benefit, and then look at the description box and comment off of said description box without getting any actual context to what you're actually seeing. So let me try to provide some context, even though for a lot of you it's not going to matter, because it just won't. I did this mock draft based off of the assumption that Sam Darnold would return to school in 2018. I don't think it's a wise decision. I do not think it's the right decision for him. I think it's a bad business decision for him. But ultimately, I'm just operating off of the premise of what if he did? Because we've heard rumors, we've heard talk, we've heard thoughts that he might go back to school for another year, which could potentially up upheaval or upend kind of the top of this draft and the quarterback rankings and so on and so forth. So what would happen here? So before you just sit there and throw an absolute bitch fit about me having Saquon Barkley number one overall, understand that Sam Darnold was not in this draft based off of this scenario. Number two, also understand that we are talking about the Cleveland Browns. So there is no guarantee that they would keep the top pick because they could once again live in that delusional fantasy land that they think trading down and accumulating a bunch of additional picks is the right way to go for their organization. Just like I tried to say two years ago, it was dumb as hell to trade out of the position to draft Carson Wentz to get additional picks. It was dumb as hell to do that. So with the Cleveland Browns, you would assume dumb as hell. And dumb as hell in this case would not be drafting Saquon Barkley number one overall because the way I look at it at this point in time, based off of what I've seen, Saquon Barkley is the number one player in this draft. So I find it highly hypocritical to sit there and say, well, they didn't take a quarterback number one. We're going to bash them for taking the best player available, but then it'll come to you don't take a running back that high, which... If you ask teams like the Cowboys, you ask teams like the Jaguars, that's just an idiotic notion said by idiotic football people. Because you could look at a lot of positions outside of quarterback and make the argument that why would you draft any of them in round one? Because you could find talented players, all-stars, or excuse me, pro bowlers, all pros at every level, including undrafted ranks. Why would I have to draft any of these guys in round one? And that's an important question to ask. If the talent is that good, you take the guy. And Saquon Barkley going to a Cleveland, I'm looking at this and saying, I don't know what the hell they're going to do at this point. You would assume they would probably screw it up, though, because they're the Browns. They're probably going to fire Hugh Jackson. They're probably going to change their front office once again because they have truly established here one more time in 2017 that they are the one true skid marks of the National Football League. So... Even though I had a mock to take Saquon Barkley number one overall, and again, it's a mock draft in the middle of October, you read too much into it, then you need to get a damn life. Um, but don't put anything past him. But if, let's say Deshaun Kaiser did show him something the second half of the year, and they were still in this position to get the number one overall pick, and there was no Sam Darnold, maybe there's not a quarterback a team feels like taking number one overall, then why wouldn't they take a Saquon Barkley? I'm just saying. Uh, in this case, I've got the 49ers pulling the trigger and drafting Josh Rosen because maybe there's a fear that they couldn't get Kirk Cousins in free agency or maybe they like the fact that they could draft a 21-year-old kid instead of signing somebody else's 29- to 30-year-old quarterback, which, again, would be the sensible thing to do. I don't know that Josh Rosen should be drafted number two overall, but I would much rather draft a kid at age 21 or 22 than sign somebody at age 30 and build my organization around. That's not very logical. And that's not a good long-term approach. You're getting somebody that is already in their prime, could be potentially soon exiting their prime, versus a guy that you could draft that hasn't even begun to get into their prime and the upside could be much larger. I'm just saying. Uh, you see I've got the Giants taking a core for the offensive tackle from Western Michigan with Trey Adams blowing out his ACL, Connor Williams in the meniscus injury. You know, the Giants are desperate for offensive line help and... I would assume at this point, a core four might be the number one offensive tackle on the board, but who the hell knows? 
Um, some of you might look at me having the Colts take a wide receiver at number four and think I'm crazy, but all long term, you know, I look at the Colts. There's no reason for them to play Andrew Luck this year. Playing Andrew Luck this year is dumb. Even if they thought to themselves, hey, you know what we can do? We can play Andrew Luck, and in this division that really isn't all that good, we have a chance to win it. And in theory, they potentially could. But what are you going to get out of that if you did? Winning the division means Pagano might have to stay. Do you really want that? Furthermore, now you're back into the drafting in the middle of the pack in round one. It makes no sense. There's just no good end game here. But looking at it from an Andrew Luck standpoint long term, you've got to get him more help. And you could say, well, you need to build up the defense. Let's be honest. The Colts are a shitty team. You need to build up everywhere. And honestly, you need to get better at receiver because T.Y. Hilton and Dante Moncrief, that's not getting the job done. James Washington would be something that would get you to the point of helping get the job done. For Oakland, I look at the thought of Khalil Mack and Bradley Chubb on the same defensive line. If I'm a Raiders fan, I say yes, please. Derwin James, the safety to the Chargers at number six, they need an impact player at safety uh, that they haven't had since Eric Weddle left. So to me, he would make a lot of sense. Equinemius St. Brown, you know, I continue to mock him to the Bears. You won't see, I don't think, any mocks with him there right now. It doesn't mean that I'm right, but it also doesn't mean that those other people are right too because these are a lot of the same people, for those of you that are going to ask, where the hell is Arden Key? Frankly, at this point, when talking about Arden Key, why would anybody mock him high? And I'll put it this way. I'll take my history out of calling out these overmocked and overrated prospects over a lot of other people. So at this point in time, I'm throwing a guy like Arden Key almost into a Randy Gregory type of category, a Jorn Werner type of category, and so on and so forth. I don't have him going in round number one because I think as teams start to look at some concerns about durability, uh, concerns about scheme fit, but most importantly, concerns about off the field stuff and so forth, I'd be surprised if he was anything more than a late first round pick. Just saying. But this is my mock. Take it however you want. For those of you guys that uh, just commented on the pics in the description without actually watching the video, thanks for giving me the view anyways. But sorry for your ass that you missed out on the context. For the rest of you, let me know what you think of my mock. Uh, Falcons fans, I'm sure you're going to have a reason to bitch at me about something. Well, you know what, 28-3, to 3, so screw you.